Well, welcome back to Contrastly. My name's Simon Plant, and today we're going to look at painting light trails into a nighttime scene. So, in the last video, uh, we looked at retouching a nighttime scene where there's a lot of car trails going through the shot, and uh, I thought it'd be good to revisit this uh, this type of photography and show you how I approach uh, shots that's got light trails uh, and cars going through the scene. It's not always possible to get exactly what you want in one exposure, um, maybe because it like with the last shot there's a lot of traffic lights in in place in the scene and so some traffic would come and stop and then the other traffic would move and it's hard to get the light trails how you want them in that sort of scenario uh, because the traffic is stop and starting so I thought I'd show you how we can get around that on screen here I've got three exposures of uh, a similar scene of cars going down a dual carriageway and uh, on some parts of the road we've got some nice uh, nice uh, light trails going away from the scene and some headlights coming towards the scene but not in one frame so the way we can get around this is to um, lock the camera down on the tripod set your aperture and your exposure um, and uh, do not touch those you can ch change the uh, exposure using the shutter speed but you don't want to move the aperture same with the focusing manual focus on one spot don't touch it. Um, white balance, I would leave that on daylight personally, uh, but, but if you're shooting raw, obviously you've got a flexibility there. So once you've got the camera locked down, you don't want to be touching anything. Like I said, you can touch the ex exposure using the shutter speed. And on that note, in terms of shutter speed, you, you want to be shooting when there's still a bit of daylight left in the scene. So, you know, you don't want the sky going black if you can help it, because you want to see a little bit of detail in there. So it's a bit of a, um, a bit of an experimentation. I normally start shooting about sort of five ten minutes after sunset, and within that following sort of twenty minutes, half an hour or so, you can just keep shooting, and the light will get better and better to a point where it gets a bit too dark and you've lost the sky. So it's not an exact science. So in terms of your shutter speed and how long to keep it open. Obviously, it will depend on how much light is in the scene at the time. Also, depends on how fast the traffic's moving. On these images, I'm shooting these at 30 seconds at f16. Now, the reason for that is it's probably still quite a bit of light left in the scene, and I'm trying to drag the shutter out as much as possible. So, 30 seconds was probably quite a good compromise. If the traffic is going through a city and it's slow moving, you might want to try and extend that further, um, and that will help blend the light trails quite nicely through the image. The reason I'm saying to you about keeping the camera locked down and not touching too much of the settings is because the easiest way, uh, it's not the only way, but the easiest way of getting these light trails into one single file, one single shot, is to open them in Photoshop uh, Photoshop um, in layers, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a second, and then we can selectively mask out the different parts of the image um, and uh, blend it into one, as I said, and Photoshop, if it's not moved around too much, Photoshop will automatically align the pictures for you, and it just makes life a lot easier. But let me show you what I mean. It's always easier to show you than perhaps explain this. So I've applied some basic adjustment to these uh, raw files within Lightroom. Once I've done that, I'm going to select the th images that we've got three here in front of us. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go edit in. And down here it says open as layers in Photoshop. And that's going to do exactly that. It's going to open them up into a single Photoshop file. Okay, so we're now in Photoshop. I've got my layers here. I've renamed my layers. Um, I've got my base image, which has got light trails on both sides of the carriageway. Then I've got one that says red trails left lane, which is this one. Some nice uh, glowing effects there. And we've got a, an indicator here on the car, a uh, turn signal. Um, and on the top one, we've got top red trails, which are these top ones here, which we might be able to use as well. Might not need all these, but sometimes you might have as many as, you know, I don't know, four, five, six, seven different uh, different uh, layers, uh, maybe with all different types of uh, lighting effects in each one. And it helps to name these. I'm now going to select these layers. I'm going to go to Edit, and now going to go to Auto Align Layers. 
And this is going to basically uh, do exactly that. Going to try and automatically align the layers so any slight shifts should be adjusted. I'm just going to click Auto for the projection and click OK. And that will m work its magic. And hopefully you haven't touched the camera too much. And nothing appears to have changed. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add, hold down the Alt Option key, add a layer mask and now by holding down the alter option key that adds a black layer mask which hides the layer i'm going to do that same for the next one alter option key add layer mask so these now are hiding the contents of that layer we can now select the layer get a paintbrush and we want to be painting with white okay to make sure we've got white there i would go with a a flow of say 10% somewhere around there and then what we're simply going to do is uh, paint in some of the light trails that we may want from the certain parts of the image so I'm going to come in here just paint in some of this actually I've just realized I have painted the wrong layer so the top so this is sorry this is for the middle uh, of the light trails on this carriageway so I'm just going to brush a bit, little bit bigger and that's why it's good to name the effect that you want on each layer even though I didn't read it properly and you can see now I'm bringing in some of that lovely glow there on that layer now I think we had a nice indicator signal on this one as well there it is coming through and that's all we're doing we're just selectively painting in the bits of the layer that we want and you can cr increase the opacity of the brush if you feel you need to but it's best to go slowly and build it up in my opinion if you want to check the layer you can turn off the layer mask and there's a little bit here we could bring in a bit stronger so that's about right for there I don't think there's anything on the near carriageway you wanted not on that one so that is just bringing in some extra glow on that side maybe painted a bit more here Then here, which is my top red trails, which will appear, might not need these really, but I'm going to paint a little bit in anyway. Bit of orange in there, like so. Now if you're looking to get a real pudgy colour, here's another little trick for you. We can change the blend mode here to something like, and you can experiment, but something like hard light. Okay, that's going to really make the colours saturated. But we are getting some uh, byproduct of this by uh, darkening a bit of the carriageway as well. But if you double click on the side of the layer here, you bring up the layer styles. So if I can just get this out of the way a little bit, and sometimes you can get the the drop out the darker tones. So let's just drag this across till it's gone. Okay. Then we'll hold down the Alter Option key to split that slider so we get a nice transition. And then we can just drag this across and see if we can get a good blend. If you go too far, you're going to lose the effect of the red, and we don't want to do that. So it's a bit of a compromise, but sometimes you can get a really nice punchy effect like so. So that has just added extra punch to the image okay so there's a little trick for you so that's using the hard light and also the layer styles the, bl the blend if sliders um, and the same for this one let's try this one as well let's try again hard light you can see that's real made that real punchy there's hard light there's normal so it's made quite a big difference so let's do the same again we're gonna double click on the side of the layer let's get this out of the way a little bit we're gonna use the uh, blend if sliders on this layer drag the shadow slider across until that darker tone starts to disappear then hold down the alter option key to split the slider that gives us a better transition and then we can hopefully pull it 
a little bit. I think that probably works quite well around there. Okay, click OK. So that's made a hell of a big difference. It just gives a little bit more punch to the image. All I would do then to finish this off is to start to. Uh, I would lock all these layers together for a start. Um, I then just apply some uh, curves adjustments just to kind of add a little bit more mood perhaps to the image. Maybe darken the edges of the frame a little bit. Or darken the whole image if need be. In fact, we could do that. That's going to add a little bit more of that blue cast, a bit more of a nighttime feel. Get my brush with black. And then we can paint back in with a pen tool, a uh, brush tool, sorry, with black. I'm going to set my opacity down about 15%. And then we can just come back in and lighten the row a little bit. And I mean, this is just a starting point. You can really go to town with this and start adding some other effects, some more colour to it, if you wish. But that is basically how we can add various light trails into one image. Okay. So um, yeah. So therefore, you can from the here you can sort of said add more adjustment layers, add a bit of extra color to the picture, even add some more layers and add some more light trails if you've got them. But what my advice would be to to you would be to just keep shooting. Um, you know, as I said, it's going to be a point, a sweet spot where the light, the ambient light in the sky against the road is going to going to be just right. It's going to want to be a little bit lower than the street light in the cars, but enough detail left in the sky that you can see. You know, see the countryside around. You can still darken this down further if you wanted to, if you wanted to make it a little bit more moody. Uh, but you can't really lighten it to, if, it, if the sky's gone too far, too dark. So that uh, would be my advice: just keep shooting, get lots of different light trails. You might find, as I did, that you get um, some trucks coming through or coaches, um, and uh, or even ambulance, ambulances or police cars or something, and you get those little blue flashing lights on top, and that can create some interesting effects as well. So it's far better to overshoot the scene than to undershoot it. Um, so you've got plenty to work with. I've just done this, as you've seen, we just with three images. Uh, but if you uh, shot more, then obviously you've got that the options to add other little bits and pieces into the scene. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope to catch you on the next one. Cheers for watching.